Do you have enough light in your life? Are you soaring in the joy around you? Are you stuck and unable to make life happen? Stay tuned for the Rabbi Jenny Show, where you will learn how to bask in the light and find more joy and meaning in life. Call to talk to Rabbi Jenny at 888-565-1470 and email questions and comments at rabbijenny.com. And now, if you're ready, stay tuned for the rabbi who will light your world on fire. Rabbi Jenny. Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. It's Rabbi Jenny. I'm so thrilled to be here this week as usual. Get ready for the longest roller coaster out there. It's a... Uh going to be a wild hour. I'm excited about our topic. Um, let's see, a little a little reminders about the Rabbi Jenny show and how to get in touch with me. You can go to our rabbijenny.tv and email me there. Please get in touch with me. A lot of people have. It's great. Check me out. Like my Rabbi Jenny Skylark Facebook page. That will really help me out. You can get information on our guests and upcoming events. Uh, and I'm on the Twitter and the Instagram. I'm trying to get involved. So hook up with me on all those. I really, really appreciate it. And I want to get you uh, involved in the show. So let's get started, and we always start the Rabbi Jenny show the same way, and uh, that is with the two main ideas. I want you to take these home, I want you to make these a part of you, I want you to own them, I want you to quote them, and I want you to tell as many people these two main ideas. And the first one is this, that the world is happening for you, not to you. This is very important, please take it into your heart. When I say it, I feel like I should, could, could say it the entire hour, and that would be a great show, that the world is happening for you and not to you. And the second main idea of the Rabbi Jenny show is that you are divine love, light, energy, always expanding. And that is why the world is happening for you, because we are all a part of that same energy and we are all trying to expand. So no matter how it looks, it has actually come into your life to help you expand and become bigger and better and brighter and fabulous like you are, listeners. Well, the topic for today is the power of animals. And this is very important and sacred topic to me because it's actually... Uh, the how my real spiritual journey began was through animals. And before we talk about Noah, which is the part of the Torah that we're going to talk about, um, I want to talk to you about what I think spirituality is. When I teach people spirituality, I have a very uh, specific way of looking at it. I'm not sure who I took it from or which teacher of mine. So if, if it was yours, please own it. I, I have no problem with that. But I look at spirituality um, as a connection and a relationship with the world. Um, when you talk about religion, I believe you're talking about worshiping, which means that you are on one level and the divine is on another, and you actually have to do things to get to that level. Whereas in spirituality, we're all on the same level, and we're working with relationship and connection. And that that is really important for our topic today, folks, because our topic today is always about the whole world. We're connected to everything in the world, and one of the ways that we uh, remain connected and one of the ways that we are communicating with our surroundings is through animals of all sizes and shapes and colors. Um, I want to begin before we actually read Torah which is funny with a quote from Black Elk. Um, uh, some of my teachers are Lakota and I give uh, the Sioux people a very big part of my life um, from the, the, the west and nor north, north, midwest and west. Um, so this is a quote by Black Elk. All things are our relatives. What we do to everything, we do to ourselves. All is really one. And that is uh, Chief Black Elk, uh, who had the sacred vision um, of the hoops. And we've talked about that on other shows. But this is important because the story of Noah, we've all heard. We've all seen cartoons about Noah's Ark. And there's been so many movies. There was um, the one uh, about, uh, oh gosh, Steve Steve Carell played the man who had to build the ark in the middle of the suburbs. That was hysterical. This is a very um, uh, a story you learn as a child, but you never really, I mean, in my, in, my, in my respect, I never really thought of it or I was never really taught anything but the fact that God wiped out the earth and put a bunch, you know, we all live because he put everything on the boat. I, I never really, really looked at the, all the symbolism in the story until I started uh, studying Torah. And the way the story goes is God is not really happy with the way things are in the world. And it's described in very human forms. And we've talked in this in this uh, show about how you have to start looking at things from the perspective a little bit higher, a little bit more an energetic 
uh, words and thoughts. And if you think of God as energy um, and you think of God as being unhappy, what you would want to think of is the energy was unbalanced. And that's the way I want you to think of this. So the energy of our earth, our mother earth was unbalanced. Something was wrong. Something wasn't even. Something wasn't in harmony. Uh, the sacred people of the Apos in the Andy Mountains, they talk about being an Aini in balance. Jewish mysticism is all about being in harmony and balancing all of the wheels that keep your body going. So there was something out of balance going on here. Instead of thinking that God was mad, I like I really I really want to pass that on to you because you can lose the interpretation, you can lose the the magic and the beauty in a story if you're so busy thinking that there's something to be ashamed of, and and that just closes our minds altogether. So let's just say the world is out of balance, and so somehow this man Noah is recognized to help with this balance. What's interesting about Noah, which I never noticed before, is that Noah had three sons, which I knew, but I never noticed the config configuration of his son's names as much as I did today. And everything I notice when I study Torah before I teach Torah, I believe I'm supposed to share with you. And this is so cool, you guys, because I always talk to you about the Hebrew language in the, in the scroll is an actual code and is actually telling us how to live our lives. And I believe the messages from the animal the, the chief message from the Torah is to live in balance and harmony, to love everyone as you would love yourself. So let me just tell you about the names of Noah's three sons. His three sons' names are Shem, Ham, and Yafet. And I have to tell you this because their names begin with three letters. The first one is the Shun, which is the Shekhinah, or the feminine aspect of God. The second letter is a Chet, which is for Chai, or life. The third letter is Yafet for the son, which is a Yud, which is the Yud for Yahweh, or Adonai, which is the male aspect of God. So, if you look at the order of their names, you see that when the feminine, Shem, is balanced with the Yud in Yafet, you can have life, which is Chem. And what's so cool about this, you guys, is that you can do the same three things with the word for Shaddai, which is the first word for actual, the way God appears in Torah. And, you know, I, I really could talk about that next week when I talk about Abraham, is that, you know, you have the, the Shin and the Yud and the Dalit in the middle. is like the door opens and then Abraham can leave. This is just so cool. I mean, I absolutely love the code and, and now I'm getting really into it and I'm getting us off topic. This is crazy. Okay, so we're going to come back. We're going to come back to the story of Noah. So Noah's story is important because it teaches us teaches us two things about the animals. It teaches us that everything about the individual animal is important. It has a message. It has something we must bring forward. That these creatures that were created in a multitude of different ways and shapes and forms, and they're absolutely fabulous. I mean, have you ever seen a toucan? I mean, who, who made that? A platypus? It's fabulous. But each animal has a symbol, and we need them. Because Noah got on the boat, not with all the different people in the world. He actually got on the boat with a couple of each animal. Why? Because when we come into balance with the world, we need to have them all with us. We need to have them with us to communicate with us, to keep us in Aini, in harmony, in balance, in beauty to ferret. So what's cool about this story is it shows us that you must pay attention to the animals. The first way it shows us is that he doesn't make the ark out of a tree. or Well, he makes an ark out of a tree, of course. But he makes an ark out of a very specific type of wood. And the way it is described is not by the name of the wood or the tree. The name it is described, it's gopher wood. It's actually the wood of the gopher. Now remember, I'm trying to teach you that animals are always talking to you, that they each have symbols. What do we know about a gopher? Well, we know gopher on the love boat, if you were born in the 70s and, or lived in the 70s. But you also know like the gopher at work. He's the guy you send out for everything. The gopher represents preparation or gathering. So it's so beautiful that in the beginning of this story, we're not making it out of any other kind of wood. We're not even making it out of beaver wood or any other kind of animal that might represent building. We're making it out of this preparing. We're preparing, we're gathering, we're getting ready for the balance, okay? And then he loads on all the animals. And, you know, there's so much more in this story, but we're fo going to focus on the animals this, this year. Next year, maybe we'll talk about the the um, dimensions of the actual ark itself. I, I couldn't tell you. Um so what happens is, is we know that all the animals go on and then for like seven, 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 40 days, you know, there's lots of numbers in there and, and, and we get flooded. Uh, the earth gets flooded and they're on this big ark and you have Noah and his family and his three sons, remember the balance of life and his wife and some other things and all these birds and all these different clean and unclean animals. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, the flood is over. 
Now, what happens, again, after the flood, is Noah doesn't just look around and say, hmm, are we ready to start now? That's not how it happens. The message in the story of Noah is about the animals, that the animals around us have a sacred purpose and a meaning. The first animal that he sends out is a raven. Now, if you know anything about the mythology of Raven, they represent magic, but they also represent the absorption of light for the safety of life. There's so many myths about the Raven diving down, originally white, and it dives down and absorbs everything, and that's how it changes its colors. And the, he sends out this shape-shifting Raven. He sends out this thing. To, to, it's like a signal. It's the first bird that comes out. But we don't get to, we don't get to do anything in, when the Raven goes out. Like, the Raven has a whole different meaning. And then when the Raven comes back, he sends out a dove. And when everything is signaled from the dove that everything is okay, and the dove, as we all know, signifies peace and prophecy and all love and, and, and harmony. And, you know, when you see a dove, you're just, oh, dove. Um, and, and so after this dove comes back, we know that we're in harmony. We're in balance, you know. And what's so interesting is the raven is black and the dove is white. And that's balance. This is this idea of harmony and balance. And that in order to be in balance, we must, we must really recognize that we are connected to the animals, that they are an important part of our life. I want to read some, a quote. Um, uh, Pythagoras, we all know who he was, the mathematician, said that animals share with us the privilege of having a soul. And I do not believe that anything that happens in my day is random. Something that uh, I practice every day is I meditate and ask for an animal. You know, this started almost 20 years ago that I started doing this out of nowhere. And I started to ask to learn about the animals, uh, read their qualities, because when you start to become spiritual, you start to start noticing your world. So listeners, the message today, and we have such a fabulous guest, is to listen and look at your world. Oh, I have another, okay, lots of people, if you've ever read The Tao of Pooh by Benjamin Hoff, he says lots of people talk to animals, but not very many listen to them. That's the problem. Because they're here, you know, you didn't just run across that caterpillar today for no reason. That caterpillar represented good luck, new birth, something coming into your life. So the world is always communicating with you. So the message today is definitely to tap into that, to look around. Are there animals that come to you on a regular basis? As some days you see a lot of vultures in Florida, some days you see a lot of squirrels. There's an absolute reason for this and how wonderful to continue the idea that the world is happening for us, that we're never alone, that we're actually working with the entire planet to remain in balance, and we're always getting hints and clues. I have literally noticed that when my son and I drive in the morning, we both notice different animals. Now, I can tell you we're in the same car. We're looking out at the same terrain. But he may notice something scurrying by and say, hey, mom, I noticed that. And I'll notice something in the sky or I won't notice anything that day because nothing's grabbing my attention. So the idea here is to be spiritual. The idea is that animals are so powerful that nothing is happening by mistake. And that, I believe, is the message of Noah. Oh, and we get a little Duran Duran, hungry like a wolf. I love it, I love it, I love it. This is Rabbi Jenny. Join us uh, for Power of Animals. Keep listening. The after school hours between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. are when millions of children go home alone or are without adult supervision. Statistics have shown that during this time, gang involvement, teenage pregnancy, and drug use begins. For the past 15 years, For the Children, Inc., a place where children come first, has been a pioneer in providing quality after-school programming for underprivileged youth aged 5 to 18 in Palm Beach County. Our children are our future. To ensure their success, they must have equal access to quality educational, personal growth, and leadership tools. For the Children, Inc. provides them all. Donate now to For the Children, Inc. at www.forthechildrenfirst.org. This public service announcement for For the Children, Inc. was brought to you by the law offices of Manjula Caladini, Esquire, concentrating in immigration law, www.immigrationassociates.net. Hi, it's Rabbi Jenny from the Rabbi Jenny Show. Are you planning a wedding, baby naming, or bar bat mitzvah? Have you recently adopted a pet? 
bought a new home or opened a new business? Do you have an important anniversary coming up and would like to renew your vows? Have you recently lost a loved one and need some compassion and care through this process? These are some of the many life events that touch our lives. It is at these moments that we need a special person for guidance and compassion and care to officiate and guide us through those moments. Call me, Rabbi Jenny, at 561-346-8207 to guide you and officiate these life events. 561-346-8207. Rabbi Jenny, for personal compassion and care and loving guidance for the important events of your life. Are you or someone you love suffering from a substance abuse problem? Have you tried many different ways to heal and rebuild your life and are finally ready for a solution? At Bliss Recovery, there is a solution. At Bliss Recovery, one examines foundational issues and is guided by talented, qualified professionals to rebuild one's life. Learning coping skills in a supportive environment, clients of Bliss Recovery rebuild their life with increased self-esteem, awareness, and purpose. At Bliss Recovery, one is awakened to joy and connection to the world. Bliss Recovery, building lives, spirit, and soul. Find the solution to your substance abuse problem and contact Bliss Recovery now at 844-84-BLISS or go to blisstreatment.com. Bliss Recovery, building lives, spirit, and soul. You have been listening to Rabbi Jenny, who asks, are you ready to bring more light and love and joy into your life? A spiritually uplifting show that will change your world. Call in at 888-565-1470 or email at rabbijenny.com and share your thoughts with Rabbi Jenny. Now, back to our show. Hey, it's Rabbi Jenny. Welcome back. We're talking about the power of animals. We're getting kind of a smooth feel on the Rabbi Jenny show today. I just want to tell you I'm having a really good time, feeling a good vibe here, talking about my favorite thing uh, this week, because I say that this week because everything's my favorite thing, but is animals. I mean, I absolutely adore them. I'm going to tell you all about I Oh, I, I have a new dog. It's fantastic. But I want to give a quote before I introduce our bad mama jamma because I believe that this quote represents this woman who's coming on. And it's a, it's a quote by French poet Anatole France. I hope I'm pronouncing it. If I'm not, please email me and text me again about my pro- pronunciation issues. Um, but this is the quote. Until one has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened. And when you meet our bad mamma jamma, her soul is awake. So let's uh, do our bad mamma jamma segment. Hey, we are here with Diane Fra- Fraser, right? Diane? Fraser, yeah. Fraser. Okay, Fraser from Stray Aid. Tell um Stray Aid and Rescue in Broward County. Um and I met Diane through a friend of mine. We were kind of linked together so she could come be on the Ray Jenny show and she runs this amazing uh organization, nonprofit organization uh called Stray Aid and Rescue and I'm going to let her tell you all about it. So, start us off, Diane. Well, um we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We're based in Wilton Manors. We're located at 2365 Wilton Drive in Wilton Manors. We, we operate a spay neuter clinic. Um, we are open to the public. Um, we spay neuter dogs and cats. Our focus um, is to stop pet overpopulation. Mm. So we, uh, we provide an affordable service to our community and um, we provide the spay neuter service along with vaccinations and testing, microchipping. And uh, we operate five days a week, and um, we provide a quality care um, to our community. That's, it's so great. But, you know, it's even greater, and I like to um, bring this to my listeners, is, you know, living your bliss and living in a, in a sense of purpose. Tell us, Diane, how you started Stray Aid, because I know a little bit of the story, but they need to know it. So, Well, um, you know, I started out, you know, I, I'm an animal lover, and I've had dogs and cats my whole life and you know going into the shelters and seeing the animals that are that are living in the shelters and um just Mm -hmm. community 